Hello, Internet. Welcome back to our Asteroid Belt shader. Uh, in this one, in this video, we're going to be working on making our shader actually cast shadows. Uh, so we actually kind of broke that in the last video. And so the idea here is hopefully it's going to be a short video, but we're going to get sh shadows back. And so the way we do that is our alpha transparent shader here, our ring cannot cast shadows. So we need something else that can do that. Uh, and so what I've been thinking is let's just make another shader that does almost the same thing, but it's not going to be an alpha shader and it's going to be fully opaque like so. And we don't need any fading. So we just need a uh, inner ring diameter. Uh, so this is just a copy of our previous shader. And so we have our inner ring diameter here. And that's still needed so that we can actually render things. But what we can do is we have our main texture. Don't need the density map. That's not needed. So we can just totally pull that out. We don't need our fade distances still. And we don't need anything that references them. But what we do need, actually, we do need our density map. Shoot. Sorry, going insane. So what we do need is we do need a clip. Uh, so this is just going to be a, a custom cutout shader. At least that's, that's the plan I have. Uh, so we can do our cutoff. And so if anything's below this, we don't want to render it. So if anything's underneath our cutoff, it, it's out. And so what we can do then is plug this in with a range between zero and one, like so, set it to 0.5, I guess. And then this is just gonna have to be tweaked to actually do what we want. So all of that looks good. And we can actually keep most of this as well. The only thing we don't need is this alpha. We can swap that out with a clip of our cutoff minus that, actually, with this minus our cutoff. Uh, so if this sum is less than our cutoff, this becomes zero, and then we don't draw it. So that should actually hopefully do it. Uh, if we, we need to add our variable for our cutoff there and then make sure it actually compiles, seems to have. So I'm going to copy our planet rings and call it a planet ring shadow. So we get this fun thing. It's using the same old trippy mushroom shader, uh, but we can throw on this. And then we get our disk, which still is not, oh, then we have to turn on shadows only. So now our shader is casting shadows. The only other thing we need then is to actually adjust it so that it is properly casting shadows. So we should be able to tune this. Doesn't look like it's gonna work off. Sure. Actually, I'm going to totally disable that and we can just mess around with this. Our uh, planet shadows, not shadows only on. There we go. Okay. So we should now be rendering shadows. We're not rendering shadows. That makes us render them. That doesn't. Weird. Very weird. Interesting. I wonder why that's happening. And this cutout, this cutoff, it's not working at all, actually. I think I have screwed the things up. It is, it is not as it should be. Um, let's see. 
Well, first off, let's apply our density map like so. So that should actually, oh, 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 I see. So this is a sorting issue, it looks like. Uh, so we've, we were talking about how transparent things can be a little bit funky. This isn't transparent anymore, but it's still a bit funky. Uh, and I don't know why entirely, but I would guess that it is caused by things being a little bit messed up uh, because it's thinking, it's getting the order, it's rendering them in wrong. And so then the shadows are getting either drawn or stopped. So you turn this off, you still don't get proper shadows. Oh, well then, that's cool. I may need to actually look this up. I was thinking that we could just use a cutout, but that didn't work. So let me actually look up how a cutout shader is actually done, and then we'll pick this back up, because that was kind of anticipating that would just work. And I don't know why it didn't. So let's find out. I, I was wrong <laughs> again. So we need this alpha test uh, for a cutoff. And there's one more thing that I am missing, and that is this. Uh, so the tags, there's a special tag for actually transparent cutout called the transparent cutout, which I probably, probably should have known that, but ooh, lies may have happened. Ah, found it. So I think that cutoff, no, that's not going to work, is it? Because that needs to go up here, above here. Because things are evaluated procedurally, so they're they're found that way. So we should be able to give it a variable name, and it doesn't still doesn't find it. Declaration of cutoff conflicts with cutoff. Got it. Solved. Why? Oh, duh. Redefinition. We don't need that. Sorry. I don't know what you just saw, but I'm sure my editing made that look like I wasn't screwing up for for 15 minutes, but all right. Why was that wrong? Undefined variable of cutoff. O dot alpha. All right, let's get back to this, I think. We should be able to pass out an alpha transparency here, and it should actually use that. Uh, and since it's a cutoff shader, this should then be converted and cut off. Yes. Okay, good. That's happening the way it should be. So we get this, and then there's an add shadow, which adds a shadow pass to it and it didn't seem to do anything. So I may have spelled that wrong. Let's try that. There we go. Cool. All right, that was a mess. But anyway, so let's walk through that because that was a mess. And I don't know what you saw because uh, there's going to be editing here. But what we have is we have a cutoff which is passed in and used as the alpha test for cutoff. So we're doing an alpha test to see if it's above or below a certain value. And if it's below it, we're cutting it off and not, not drawing it. And so now we have that. Uh, we probably don't need full forward shadows on it because we don't need to render shadows on this shader. Uh, but then the other things we have is we have these tags here, which are for an alpha test and a transparent cutout render type. And then we add a shadow caster onto our shader. And so that add shadow just says, add something to draw shadows. So we do that. And then we go through this entire shader. This still needs to be cleaned up. 
I'll probably do that on my own time. You guys don't need to watch me go through and delete things. That, that it probably isn't very conductive. But uh, anyway, this is pretty much the exact same shader we were using here. The only difference is now for our alpha, we're actually passing that into a cutout shader, cut off shader rather, and we're actually cutting things off. So we get shadows on our planet, which is cool. So then I can, oops, not turn them off, make it shadows only. So now we don't have a ring, but we do have shadows on the planet. And then we can enable our better shader for that. And we actually get rings that look like rings, but they aren't uh, being cut off or anything silly like that. So everything should be, should be good actually. So now we have rings being cast from our, our ring. Well, we have our rings casting our shadows onto our planet. We still don't have our sh planet casting a shadow onto the rings. That's going to be like one of the final steps after we get this like mushroom <laughs> thing out of there. Uh, but we can actually do that too. That shouldn't be too hard, I don't think. Uh, but we'll have to play around with it and see how it goes. But I I'm, I'm think we're making good progress. We've got rings and we've got shadows and now we need to actually make this look a little bit more like asteroids and a little bit less like a bad mushroom trip. So I think that's it for this video. So if you guys liked it, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think. Uh, and if there's anything you guys want me to improve, let me, let me know about those too. I'd, I'd love to hear it. Uh, so until next time, see you internet.